Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head men's basketball coach Chuck Benson. Chuck fall today to Newberry 80 to 73. Uh, and if I told you before the game that you were going to limit Gibson, Lang, and Angelo Sales Jr. to combine 17 points prior, you'd probably like Carson Newman's chances. Uh, but Quindavian McCollum and T.J. Brown step up in a big way for Newberry. Uh, what's your summation of a 13-point loss here to the Wolves? You know, it's crazy because uh, uh, I, I literally, uh, I literally saw, you literally saw uh, our team uh, unravel uh, when um, – when what they perceived to be as failure uh, encroached upon their plans. I told them, I was like, guys, it's insane because, like, the entire first half, I'm telling you, I'm good. I'm, I'm, we are doing what we set out to do. <laughs> Sales uh, and the two shooters, that was the deal. Uh, the other two kids that exploded, you've got to give credit to them. When, when, when I say they, they did what they don't do, that's, that's what they did. They did what they don't do. Uh, unfortunately, our response was one of implosion and frustration. Um, and I think that's it's, it's sort of um, you go back to fat cat syndrome is uh, iconic coach uh, Chris Jones uh, labeled it. Uh, we, got, we had a really good uh, rivalry win on Wednesday, <coughs> and our players collectively, this not individually, but collectively, this group of guys at this point uh, haven't had enough uh, prosperity really to know how to handle that. They actually handle adversity a little bit there, and they do prosperity, prosperity right now. But the first half was such, just such a, a shock to them that despite our efforts um, to sort of reel them in emotionally and mentally, uh, it, 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 was, it was very, very difficult. Definitely <laughs> executed the scout in the first half and played well enough defensively in the second half to have a chance to rally, uh, but started 4 of 21 from the field after halftime. What was it that was the struggle offensively today? Well, I mean, if there's such a thing as a, as a, as a, as a, as a basketball hangover, we had one from the first half. I mean, uh, I've told our guys, you know, when as coaches we have to, when we have to pick you up off the mat to deal with what we're facing, then typically we have a problem. And, you know, um, I felt like that – I felt like we were literally picking our guys off, up off the mat with the, the shock uh, and surprise that they were demonstrating uh, at, in regards to what T.J. Brown and uh, McCollum did uh, the first half. Uh, you know, and I kept on telling them, guys, I'm, I'm not upset with – I'm not upset with uh, – I thought we actually, from a scout standpoint, were doing the right stuff, but – we let the the adversity of that, uh, what we I, what they defined as adversity, we let that impact the, the things we could control, ball security, uh, execution, um, recognition. I mean, they were obviously mixing defenses, and um, our communication, our recognition and communication by uh, our perimeter players, uh, and sort of the the, the follow through with with what we decided to run was very was very uh, inconsistent. And it, it literally goes back to that, that, that first half uh, shock, I guess, I'll say. You turn it over <laughs> 17 times. 11 of those came uh, in that yep. first half. Yep. You talk about the shock. Newberry's a team that only forces 11 turnovers a game. How much of that was self-inflicted versus Newberry caused? Well, I mean, you, you saw it just like I saw it. And we made a big deal. Our guys, like, listen – this has been something we've been saying to him the entire year. We've got to learn to take what defense gives. We've got to learn to take what execution provides. Uh, and we've got some guys that, um, you know, we, we can talk about it all day long, about uh, this is what you can expect versus an opponent. So we knew that Newberry was much more, well, they're not like the old Newberry. They're not pressing. Right. They're not extended out. They're going to protect the paint. Uh, and more or less in, 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 in encourage you and entice you to take jump shots. Well, our guys were really, really determined to try to get toward the basket. Well, that's not where the, that's not where the good stuff was. For, to, the good stuff a lot of times was, you know, uh, 
make a move towards the basket, then share the ball on the perimeter, and we have enough shot makers to, to, to capitalize, you know. So um, they had a nice strategy, nice scheme, and, 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 and we did not uh, control the things we could control related to execution based on what we were seeing. Final game of the first half of the season comes on Wednesday against UVA Wise. What do you have to do to put this one behind you uh, and get ready for a Highland Cavalier club? Okay, I've told you before, uh, uh, 18 to 22 year olds uh, will have this put behind them before we get off Newberry's campus. Uh, it's the 50 year old head coaches that uh, suffer in, in, <laughs> in, in inexplicable ways. So, uh, We'll be fine uh, as far as as far as that. I think the most important thing, and I'm going to continue to say this because it, it just is our our reality. Uh, we've got to use every one of these experiences uh, as a learning opportunity and a chance for us to to grow and improve. Um, you know, and that's a lot easier said than done. You know, uh, you just because these guys uh, are playing a game that they uh, supposedly love, that doesn't mean that that they're um, that we are going to be able to know exactly what their learning timeline will be. So I've got to be <coughs> very patient. I've got to be really methodical. Um, and we've got to continue to invest uh, at, a, at a very high level to help these guys become what we think they have a chance to become. All right, Chuck, pleasure as always. We'll talk to you Wednesday when you take on the Highland Cavaliers. Thanks, Kev. That is 